guys welcome back to my channel i am so excited about today's video because we are diving in to a very fun fall sewing project so stay tuned so welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new around here um welcome i'm so glad that you found my little corner of the web and of youtube but if you don't know who i am my name is madison i'm an instagram creator pastime blogger and current high school fashion design teacher and here on youtube i film sewing videos and tutorials along with other tidbits of fashion and style so i'm so glad that you're joining us today and i honestly am so excited about this sewing project and also the fact that this is just a sewing video it's been way too many weeks since I've put out a sewing video, but school started back and my energy has been so depleted, i.e. introvert here who has to talk to people every single day. So by the time I get to the end of the day, I'm just like completely dead. And the thought of sewing as peaceful and rele stress relieving and relaxing as sewing is to me, when you have no energy, you have no creative inspiration. But I'm so excited that today I'm diving into this because it's Saturday and Saturdays are my days for creating. It is now officially fall and I am so excited, hence the shirt, all things PSL, um, which also means my studio, which is in the garage for those of you who are new around here or didn't know that. And if you look at the wall behind me, there is a kayak because the garage also doubles as storage, which means that because it's fall, the temperature is so nice in here and it's actually lovely working on here today. So because it's fall, I thought it'd be fun to do a fall sewing project and I honestly am so excited about this mainly because I'm just really excited to have this piece in my wardrobe and also excited about it because it is a super easy project for those of you who are new to sewing and want to kind of figure out how to make a dress for yourself without a pattern and don't have a ton of experience I think this is a project that you guys can dive straight into and have a lot of fun with and also be super stylish and fashionable with it so the stress that we're making today is a tent style dress. Tent dresses kind of came back into fashion or became a trend this summer and they've stuck around for the fall and I honestly have a feeling that they're going to stick around for a while. It's just kind of a classic piece. They're very effortless. You can do a ton with them. They work in every single season. There's so many different styles, colors, and prints and so I'm excited about this dress today because there's so many capabilities for it for the fall time and so the reason why I'm making this is because I was recently at Target a couple of weeks ago like three weeks ago and i was perusing the clothes seeing what they had seeing what styles they had and i came across this dress that i absolutely fell in love with and yes i could have bought it um as easy as it would have been <laughs> to buy that dress if you watched my fall thrifting video you probably heard me talk about the fact that i have been trying really hard not to buy clothes um like brand new from stores this year i've been trying to either thrift things or make them myself and so case in point today is me trying to make this myself rather than buy it and so i really love this dress because it was simple it was a tint dress and i knew there were so many things i could do with it for the fall when it came to styling and I also knew that I had this sheet at home, um, which was perfect for this project. So I'll pop a picture up right here of what the dress is. I took a picture of it while I was at the store so I wouldn't forget um, what it looked like and kind of that I needed to make it myself. And so came home, remembered I had this sheet and this is going to be perfect for this project. Also because we're going to get to cheat a lot of things because it is a sheet and some of the edges are already finished, which is fantastic. So yeah, we are going to dive right in to this project. Hopefully it will be a pretty quick sewing project. And if you are going to join me in this project, good luck and let's have fun creating. All right, so here's the great thing about this project, especially for those of you who are new to sewing. And this is why it's such a perfect project for beginner sewers and intermediate and advanced is that it is all straight seams, straight lines. It's basically just rectangles and squares. So I'm gonna hopefully walk you through as best as I can all of like the measurements for it um, but because this is a tin dress it doesn't have like fittings anywhere it has a seam across the top the fabric's gathered and then it just goes down to a midi length and then it has like thin little straps super simple super easy we don't even need really a zipper for this or any type of buttons so it is a incredibly stylish dress that is very easy to make 
So one key thing we want to take into consideration is because we're not gonna put a zipper into it, it's just hopefully going to fit over our head. Watch me completely mess this up and, and not work out whatsoever. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But anyways, all we really need is the chest measurement for us. We don't need our bust measurement, just our chest, um, which is like right above our bust and right under our arms. So this is going to be where the dress will kind of lay and fit. So we want to make sure that we sew that piece wider than our actual chest measurement. So if you have a measuring tape, you definitely want to go to want to take a measurement of that. So in the back, it should come right above like your shoulder blades. And then in the front, we are going to bring it right above our bust. And we don't want to pull this super tight. That's never how you should measure yourself. Um, the measurement is going right under our arms. And we are going to pull it just until it meets. So not super tight. And if I were you, I would also take a breath in because it actually expands our chest and that is a better way to get a accurate measurement for this dress so that when we breathe we don't cut off our air circulation. So with that it's about 34 inches um, for our chest so we know that we are going to have to widen that in order for it to fit over our head. So I think what I'm going to be doing is I think that I am going to add two inches and I might add three inches to every side just to make sure that it's wide enough to go over um, my head and my shoulders. And because this is a tent dress, they're already made to fit very loosely. Tent dresses honestly can be kind of a one size fits all thing. Um, one tent dress could fit someone who's a small all the way up into a medium or maybe even a large depending on the style of it. This is one of those dresses. So we already want it to fit super loose. It's going to be layered over sweaters t-shirts or have sweaters worn over it so that's kind of my goal for this so that measurement is really important so mine is 34 across my chest so if we add what let's say two and a half inches to every side or let's say three inches so that we have seam allowance although this is going to be the band so we're gonna say two and a half inches um so for those of you out there who are brilliant mathematicians, this next clip is a prime example of why I am not a math teacher, why math is one of my weakest skills, and why it's a miracle that any of my projects even come out remotely accurate because I can't even add simple numbers to save my life, as you will see. 34, two and a half inches on each side would be five, two, four, six. So plus six, so 34 plus six, that gives us 40 inches. So I'm going to go with a 40 inch band. It's not a waistband because it's not at our waist, but it's going to be made exactly like a waistband. And then everything else is just all based off of length and however wide we want the sheet to be. So I'll walk you guys through that math as I cut it out of our sheet. So let's go. One of my favorite parts about using sheets for projects is that all of the edges are already finished. So for this, I'm going to keep these side edges as they are and use it as the hem for my dress. And then I'm going to cut off the top and the bottom of my sheet. And I actually decided to use the thicker top finished edge of my sheet to create my straps and the band of my dress. And because I didn't need the bottom finished edge of the sheet, I just went ahead and chopped that off as well and laid it to the side. Okay, so for the length of this dress for the sheet, so I cut off um, the like top thick section of the sheet and the bottom part, and we're leaving the side seams because then we don't have to hem. We're gonna try to cut as many corners in this project. So obviously we don't need this entire length, but it is supposed to be a midi length, so there's a couple of options you have for determining your length. One, you can just take a measurement um, from like your chest, down to whatever length you want it at, and then take that measurement and cut it from your sheet. Or my favorite thing to do is just to hold it up and eyeball it. So that's what we're going to do for my project, is I'm just gonna kind of fold it to the length I think that I want it at, and I'm gonna kind of look at that and see if I like it. I want it a couple of inches longer. So if the dress fits all the way up here, I want it to hit like mid calf. So 
then we take that fold and that's what we are going to cut off and then we'll have some extra fabric left over. Now that I know the length I want my dress, I'm going to go ahead and just cut off that extra excess fabric and lay it aside to use later on. And then since the main part of my dress is still connected on one side, I'm just going to cut where it's folded to actually create a front and a back to the main part of my dress. So I decided to use the extra leftover fabric to cut out pockets for my dress, which I actually later took out of my dress and ripped them out because I ended up not liking where they were placed. But anyways, here's how you can cut some pockets for your dress. So now we're going to grab the top part of my sheet that I had already cut off and we're going to measure it to my chest measurement plus those two inches on every side. And this is going to be used to kind of create the bound section that's going to cover the gathers of my dress. So I'm using the top section of that piece of fabric I cut off that's already folded in half, cutting that down the middle. Um, and I think I cut it one inch. So if you open it up, it will end up being two inches. And then all of the leftover fabric I'm going to be using to create my straps and my straps are going to be one inch wide and I'm going to fold them in half and sew them and then kind of turn them right side out to create these nice little thin straps like you see here. So I just sewed my straps on one fourth seam allowance and then I'm going to use a loop turner to turn them right side out and have these nice really thin um, kind of bound straps for my dress. I'm also going to sew the two ends of my binding together. Really this isn't the waistband, but it's like a waistband up on your chest. So I'm just going to sew that together on my machine so it really makes like a full circle um, to cover my gathers. And then I'm going to go in now and put some markings for pockets, which I actually ended up taking out later on because I didn't like where they were placed. So I just ripped out all of those seams and ended up having a dress without pockets. But if you want to put in pockets, basically just measure about like seven inches down from where the dress falls at your chest or really wherever you want your pocket to be. I just made them way too low on my dress and it didn't work out but this is how you sew pockets before you sew the sides of the seams um, of your dress together you basically just sew your pockets on and then as you're sewing your side seams you sew around your pockets and that creates the little pocket area. So before I sew my side seams, I always get my pockets a nice little press and like I said, I ended up taking my pockets out later on because they were just too low down on my dress and I could have easily repositioned them and sewn them up higher but that would have been a whole other process and I was just really lazy and decided to take them out of this dress completely but if you want to add pockets, they're super easy to add to this dress and honestly any other dress that has side seams so this is kind of how you would do it. And now for a little bit of magic, we are going to turn our straps into actual straps. So I'm using a fun little tool called a loop turner. Basically, it's this piece of metal with a hook on the end that you stick through your strap or any kind of tube that you've sewn and kind of grab the end with the hook and then pull it right side out, which creates these perfect straps. Really, you can do it in any size. So my straps are really tiny. So this loop turner is very helpful. I give that a press and then I also am going to work on pressing up the kind of section that's going to cover the gathers at the top of my dress. I decided to press up every side half an inch um, to make sure those seams are nice and finished and hidden on the inside and then that's just basically going to become a casing for the top of my dress that my straps are going to be connected to. Next up is to sew my side seams and here since I still have my pockets attached I'm going to be creating my pockets as I'm sewing my side seams. So basically you sew down the side of your dress till you get to the pocket then you sew around the pocket to create the actual pocket section of your dress. It's the most magical and brilliant thing in the entire world and then you keep sewing down the side of your dress but again if you don't want pockets all you have to do is just create your straight side seams on the side of your dress and make it an even quicker process. And as always, I went ahead and finished all of my seams with my serger. You can also do this with pinking shears, with a zigzag stitch, or with an overlock foot on your sewing machine, or you don't even have to finish them at all. 
And now it's time to create the oh so fun gathers. As you guys know in all of my projects, I always have gathers for some reason and so it's just kind of become a thing that all I do is gather all day every day and I still have not got a gathering foot but honestly I love the precision of hand gathering. So for this particular dress, I only did one um, seam of basting stitches instead of two. It worked perfectly well because I was going to have very loose gathers and it was a lot quicker and easier to gather that all up. So once my gathers are all in place, I'm going to take kind of that casing that I created and and I'm going to go pin it over all of the gathers. This is basically the exact same step you would use when creating a gathered skirt um, or really any other project that has gathers that create some type of waistband or sleeves. And so that is going to become the top part of my dress, which is honestly really just like a very high waistline in a way. And so I made sure to spread out my gathers so that they would fit inside the full circle of that casing. And then once that is pinned into place, we're going to sew it down at our straps and then you are finished. Okay, so we now have the top of the dress sewn on. This is the one where I added two and a half inches to the sides. So it was a total of like 40 inches across my chest. So I think that it will fit fairly well. So we are going to pin on our straps to see kind of where we want them placed and then like how long they need to be. Okay, so I pinned the straps on. I made them like 14 inches. So we'll try it on and we're probably gonna have to make some adjustments, so. This is the part where we see if it fits over my head. All right, I definitely know these straps are gonna have to be shortened. But here we go. Ooh. Okay, so from the side seams to where I pinned the straps was four and a half inches on each side, but really you can kind of just eyeball it for what you want. So it definitely is fitting lower than I would like. So we're going to raise our straps. So that is a lot better. So there's still like a ton of room on the sides. Um, so it is like kind of big. I could take it in if I wanted to, but I just want to make sure I can fit it over my head. And I don't really mind that it's bigger because it is just supposed to be a sack. So once I positioned my straps at the length I wanted them to be for where the dress would kind of fall um, height-wise on myself, I just went ahead and sewed them into place. I actually just sewed them straight from the outside of my dress. You could barely tell because I was using matching thread, so you can kind of decide how you want to sew your straps, but I really just sewed it right along where my seam already was for my casing over my gathers. So here is the finished dress. I absolutely love how this turned out. It's so comfortable. I love the sack dress style and honestly this dress is called I'm wearing a sheet because it literally looks like you just threw a sheet on yourself and added straps to it. So I styled it here over a ribbed knit kind of cream top with some slide on gold shoes and I will show you two other ways you can style it for a fun stylish fall look. So the reason why I love sack dresses is because they are so versatile. So this is another way you can style it. I just threw on a really cute printed belt with this dress and then added some cute strappy nude heels while still keeping it layered over the shirt so it could be a very dressy look or very casual. And my all-time favorite way to style sack dresses is to style it with a pair of fun trainers or tennis shoes and then throw on a denim jacket. So it's this perfectly effortless, very comfortable, casual look that's also very chic and stylish. Thank you so much for watching today's video. This was a super fun project to make and I'm glad that I was able to share it with you all. If you were inspired, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you decide to try this project for yourself, make sure to tag me so I can see your wonderful creative skills. And I decided to also start a hashtag for all of my projects. So if you ever use my videos or tutorials to make a project of your own in the future, make sure to use the hashtag made with Maddie. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you stay updated on new videos and projects in the future. But without 
without further ado, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.